my personal cock blockers who's coming on right now. Her name is Brooke Hartnett. She's been doing improv for a long time. She's terrific. She's all over town. She's been doing, uh, she's been doing stand up for about eh, six months. Welcome, Brooke Hartnett. blocking anybody. I don't know if you've seen this body, but it's short and stout. Um, I'm just a small white woman and I love my cats. Uh, yeah. shout, out, shout out to cats worldwide. Um, yeah, some people say you shouldn't live with your best friend, but it's been working out pretty good for me and my cats. So, it's all right. Uh, no, but I do, I, I, had, I have another roommate who's a human male. And um, he what, described me with a degree in theater. And we got along really well. Like, a lot of people I know have problems with their roommates, like they'll walk in on them masturbating or something. And it's awkward. But I just had to walk in on him, like, singing Broadway songs at the top of his lungs, like, while masturbating. <laughs> Everybody has their demons, you know? Uh, but I, I've actually been trying to take my cat in, like, the car more often, like, take my trips. Uh, so we can get used to it, so we can like go on trips together. Uh, but he hates it. Like every time he gets in the car, he just like cries and cries, and he won't stop crying. And I'm like, listen, you gotta get used to this because some people feel like this all the time. <laughs> Speaking of depression, um, I am one of those girls that is like still going through a breakup, even though it happened like six months ago, but I'm like still broken inside. Um, it, it's fine though, uh, because it was like, it was classic fairy tale breakup, you know what I mean? Like it was like, he dumps you, and then like you cry, and then he leaves, and then you like drive to his house the next day to pick up your stuff, and like your car breaks down on the way there. <laughs> That's it. Um, <laughs> But it's fine, because I got a Prius, and uh, fuel efficiency is more gratifying than having someone to sleep next to every night. <laughs> it's really good. But it was weird. And, you know, I was having, I was having a hard time with it. it. It was one of my more serious relationships, and we'd only really been together for about a year, but he was, I guess, the first person that I was in a relationship with who I wasn't disgusted with, like, the whole time. <laughs> and I guess that's what love is. Like, that's... Like when yeah. Okay, I did it. I didn't listen to it. Um, but I'm hoping that the next season will about be about serial monogamy, so I can relate to it better. Because uh, you know, I moved on from like methodically killing people to like methodically trapping them in relationships. <laughs> like you know, I used to smother people with pillows, but now I smother them with my love. <laughs> I used to like cut up people's bodies into little bits and hide them, you know, throughout the city. Uh, but now I just cut my heart up into little bits and hand that out to all my lovers. Aww. It's uh, it's nicer than than murdering. Um, so yeah, but I you know I have to I've tried to get out into the dating scene again, but it's hard. It's weird, and I never know what to wear on dates. Like I wouldn't say that I really have a style at all. Um, like if I had to answer one of those 17 magazine style questionnaires that was like, what's your style? And people are like, oh, bohemian casual, or like sporty chic. Mine would just be like, tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. Uh, and to remedy that, I was like, instead of going out into the real world and meeting humans that speak words out loud into the air. Um, I, you know, did what Amber did, and I got an online dating account. I got an account on OkCupid. And guys, let me tell you, it was going horribly. It was going so bad. Uh, but I, you know, it was a learning experience. Like, I learned about myself that if a man shows me, like, any shred of kindness or, like, pleasantry at all, like, it's just disgusting. Like, it's the worst thing to me. It's horrible. Like, someone will just message me, like, Hey, how's your day? And I'm like, oh, gross! Delete, douchebag! Like, horrible person. You're the worst. <laughs> like, this, he just 
wanted to know like how my day was. And I was like, you suck. Um, or the, on the flip side, guys will just send me like really sexually explicit messages that are completely unwarranted because my profile picture is like me in a banana suit. Like that's <laughs> not sexy. What are you doing? Uh, it, it's gotten to the point where like the other night I awoke at 4 a.m. and I thought I heard the noise of an intruder in my home. Like I was like, <clears throat> today's gonna have to die. And I didn't know what to do. Like I just heard like rustling. It was like probably my cat. And um, I was like, I'm gonna pass the time by checking my phone. And so I like went on OK Cupid and was like scrolling through messages to pass the time, like until my death. And I was like, oh, I'm completely calm now reading these messages because life is so bleak. I hope I get murdered. In this like back to sleep. Like so over it. Like I had a Tinder, but I had to delete it because I started getting mad with people pretending to be food, and like I was okay with it. And like that was enough for me. Like I was like, it's fine. Um, I've gotten to the point though where I'm a little worried that if I were to get into like some semblance of a successful relationship, it wouldn't be like the monogamous, committed relationship that I'm used to because my friends have started doing this thing called open relationships. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Um, let me tell you. Uh, it's essentially when you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, but you're also just like allowed to have sex with whoever you want. And it's fine, there are no consequences. It's fine. Um, and what I don't get about that, just me personally, is that it seems like you're just setting yourself up to be even more sad and jealous all the time, like than you would be in a regular relationship already. You're just like guaranteeing it with this arrangement. Um, and then on the other side, I'm like, well, you know, maybe it's not that at all. Maybe I'm just worried I wouldn't be able to have sex with enough people. Like, I'm so competitive, I would just be constantly trying to, like, out-sex the other person I'm in a relationship with. Like, I'd put a chalkboard tally up in the kitchen and be like, another lay this week, Henry. Like, what do you got to show for it? Like, whoever's, whoever's losing that week has to do more household chores or, like, be the DD at any parties we go to. Like, you know, just other various punishments for being, like, too committed in, relation, like, in your relationship. Like, too monogamous to your partner. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. It's not for me. But on the other hand, I'm not, like, a very sexual being. I don't know if you can tell by, like, what I've been talking about on stage. Um, but sex is kind of scary for me. Uh, like, I had a wet dream the other night, but it, instead of people having sex, it was just, like, a guy talking to me and, like, being interested in what I had to say. <laughs> I was like, mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, I'm gonna close with a little tale of the first time I went to the gynecologist, which was not very long ago, um, because I had no need to before. I was just like, I guess it's time, I'm 21 now, my mom says I should do this. So I went. And I was, I went alone, which you should never do for the first time, it's stupid. I was so scared, it was the most scared I'd ever been. And like, why? It's just my body. Like, I shouldn't be afraid of my body, but I was so scared. And I couldn't like name why. I was just in the waiting room, like hyperventilating. And they're like, <laughs> and I was like, oh. <laughs> like going in to the, the, to the exam room. And I sit down and as soon as the door closes, I start weeping, just like sobbing, like on the little like, paper that they make you sit on, and the nurse was like, are you okay? And I was like, I don't know, I'm just really scared. And like, she didn't know what to do, so she was just like, taking my blood pressure, and I'm like, okay, uh, like, it's 120 over 80, and I was like, is that good? And she was like, it's like normal for a woman your age, and I was like, thank you! And then like, she left, like, got out of there, um, and I like, got myself back together. And then the doctor comes in and I lose it again, like immediately just crying and I like didn't know why. And she was like much more understanding and was like, oh sweetie, like it's okay. You know, um, the first time I went to the gynecologist, I cried so much the doctor thought I had been raped. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was the first 